everyone and welcome to online success journey this is episode 161 are you ready to join the clan today we have jason backwards the founder and the ceo of break the web a hybrid digital marketing agency and the ceo services firm jason has worked with businesses of all sizes ranging from small local mom and pops to enterprises brands Hello, Jason. Hi, Patience. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you for coming. I know the clan here is anxious to hear your story, so let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your own online business? So I was actually a personal trainer. I was a personal trainer for quite a few years. Uh, to go back even further, uh, I was in college for physical therapy. I was going for a master's degree to become a physical therapist. Um, I guess I looked myself in the mirror one day and realized that it wasn't what I could have saw myself doing in the long run. And I made that first big risk in my life, I would say, and dropped out of college um, and became a personal trainer to uh, kind of find the next stepping stone for me in life, what I can do to uh, kind of make ends meet. Yeah. <laughs> what did your parents say when you just dropped out and all of a sudden started focusing on training? Yeah, it's something I was always good at. I was uh, very fitness savvy, uh, health conscious, and uh, I was in the gym for even years before. And that was one of the drives that led me into physical therapy. And I guess as weird as it is to say, I loved uh, helping people. I loved the human body, but I loved more so about my own personal health as opposed to uh, continuously sharing. And uh, it's definitely a lot of work uh, being a physical therapist. It's very taxing, exhausting, and it's kind of mentally draining a little bit. So it wasn't something that I could have saw myself uh, doing in the long term. Um, I guess ironically now I find myself mentally drained, but in a different way. What a background. Okay. So, Jason, why do you do what you do? Why do I do what I do? Uh, for me, I kind of love the challenge and kind of figuring out the Google algorithms primarily. So we have a digital marketing agency, and we focus a lot on traffic generation through inbound marketing. And for me, my personal specialty is search engine optimization, getting websites to the top of Google for relevant search terms. And for me, it's it's the challenge of gaming the algorithms. It's not, not really much gaming, but feeding websites the trust metrics that the Google algorithms use to position websites higher and uh, doing the research part of it, uh, analyzing the data, uh, discovering new things, you know, whether it's uh, doing competitive analysis and seeing something that uh, never has really been talked about and something that might have happened naturally that we can try to replicate in our campaigns. Uh, for me, I get some weird excitement out of that, and I, that brings some highlights into my day. I saw that there is no such a thing uh, at the moment, like because we have all these social medias everywhere. Do we still need the uh, SEO, or is it there? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's just at the end of the day, it's just another form of digital marketing. There's a plethora of ways to market a website online. And SEO is just another one. Um, and it has its own benefits. It has its pros. It has its cons, just like any other form of marketing. Uh, but absolutely. And uh, as opposed to social media and whether you're doing paid ads on social, SEO and Google organic search is practically free traffic. So yeah, it takes a little bit of work and takes a little bit of investment initially. But once you are positioned highly in front of your target audience that's typing in search terms, you're not clicking uh, for every time somebody gets on your website. It's 100% free traffic. You're positioned there as the authority in the search term, recognized not only by your peers, recognized by Google algorithms, and they're telling your customers that you're the best at what you do. Well, if it is a free traffic, how come it's so expensive? I would say because of the competitive playing field. Um, so Google's goal primarily is to, um, A, obviously gain revenue through paid ads, but also with organic search to provide a great user experience for their search users. And they know that most people are skipping the ads and that if they fail to provide good quality search results, they will lose trust of their customer database. And for that reason, uh, it's just a competitive playing field where Google wants to show really authoritative relevant websites when possible. For example, uh, any broad definition, you'll likely see Wikipedia. Nowadays, Wikipedia is considered trustworthy because they don't allow anyone to just make edits as they used to back in the day. Uh, but they're a huge authority website that provides a great answer to the questions people might have. And for that reason, Google loves to rank them. And Wikipedia is a really powerful, authoritative website and trying to outrank them could be challenging and it does require a lot of work. SEO nowadays is a lot different than it was even two years ago, but uh, the big shift happened was 
I would say around 2012, when Google released a big algorithm update and switched the entire framework that that agencies run SEO campaigns. And now it's really about mimicking the natural approach. A website gains authority, uh, sending trust signals. There's a lot of work involved, and you know SEO is not push button as it used to. Uh, everything is done man when done right. Everything is done manually. It's done. Uh, as natural as possible to uh, avoid over optimization, avoid de optimization, and triggering all these different algorithmic penalty filters that may come when you do a bad SEO campaign. How much do we need to invest in SEO? Uh, it's really hard to say. Uh, that's probably the most common question is how much to pay for an SEO. For us, we don't have set pricing in our agency. Uh, we have our campaign minimum, which starts at give or take around 1500 per month. But uh, there's so many different variables that come into play in regards to an SEO campaign. First and foremost, where is your website currently ranking? How is Google currently viewing your website? Are you on page two or are you on page nine? Or maybe even you're not even in the top 10 pages. Then you take a look at the competition, see what's realistic, see the power and authority behind the top 10 results, and really have to analyze what it would take to, to move the needle on your website to get those rankings. So it's really hard to say how much you can expect to spend on SEO, but if you find that you're in a competitive industry, a competitive space online, it's definitely worth the investment um, to proceed with an SEO campaign. It's not something that's going to bring immediate uh, instant gratification or instant results, but in the long run, SEO campaigns usually pay off twofold. What is the most dangerous belief an online entrepreneur can have? Probably, uh, I would say there's definitely a lot of uh, disbeliefs of being an online entrepreneur. Uh, one of them, I would say, is that it's easy. That, you know, you look, especially with social media, you look at all these people who are quote unquote guru entrepreneurs, they're posting their life about them with a nice car, a private jet, uh, on some island in a giant mansion, all these different facade type environments. But uh, if they are true entrepreneurs, there's a lot of work involved. And it's usually waking up super early in the morning and ends with going to sleep late at night. Not much time for entertainment, whether you're catching up on your favorite show, not much time for hanging out with your friends, grabbing a dinner. It really is consistent work. And a lot of people tend to think that being an entrepreneur or starting a business is just fun and exciting, which it definitely has its moments. Absolutely. But um, the people that aren't willing to grind 100 percent are the differences between the entrepreneurs who actually make it or the entrepreneurs that are in search for their next preneur because the last one didn't work out. So that's one of the dangerous beliefs. And uh, there's definitely an endless list, as well as thinking that uh, your big dreams will come super fast, super come easy, and they will come super easy. It kind of ties in together where you got to be realistic about what's going to happen, with the proper business model, as well as uh, put in the work. And if you're not been willing to put in the work and you're not properly managing your expectations, It'll just be a giant letdown, not only to you, but people you bring in. Let's put man aside because you've been in business since you are a child. How do you know you are successful? I would say the good entrepreneurs never truly think they're successful. There's always room for improvement. Uh, there's In our agency, I would say, I don't know if we're a, considered a successful agency. We're still growing. So it was up to my point and my standards where we want to be as an agency, we're not yet successful. If you have future goals, whether it's uh, micro goals or macro goals set out in the course of the next few weeks or even in the course of the next few years, I would say once you hit those desired goals, then you've, I would say in your mind, be successful. But if your goals are never ending, if you always have a lot to work forward to, then uh, the goal the being successful is, is continuous. It never, never gets there, which is good. It keeps the drive going. What have you learned from business as a whole? It's it's a grind. It's a grind. It's not going to be, um, well, definitely, it's not going to be something that's, that's easily sugarcoated. You will fail. You will learn the hard way, but it'll allow you to persevere even more. You know, being a leader in itself of a team, if you are the manager managing your direct team, uh, it's not easy and you learn as you go along. It's it's never ending, pretty much. You're always learning. And if you haven't failed and you haven't yet succeeded, uh, there has to be something you've done wrong. It's very rare that you'll see somebody do very, very well initially right off the bat being a business owner or an entrepreneur. Uh, but you learn. You learn from your lessons. You proceed forward and uh, keep your head up. What is one thing that has contributed to your success? The grind, the grind and the hustle uh, never stops and don't take no for an answer. And don't for me, it's, it, was, it wasn't selling myself short. You know, I kept a mentality that uh, I might be doing well amongst maybe my close circle of friends, which is great. But there's always somebody out there who's smarter than me, working harder than me, 
and more successful than me. And if I want to be there, then um, I have to keep working hard. In your businesses, do you have a mentor or a coach? Oh, absolutely. I have quite a few mentors in all different areas. I have uh, agency leadership mentors, people that are close to me that work directly with me, allow me to analyze the aspects of my business because they've been there. Uh, they're a bit more uh, veteran and analyze certain aspects, see what I can improve on, see what we as an agency overall can improve on. And as well as marketing mentors, people that are really good at what they do, who can share insightful tips. I'm part of a bunch of variety of masterminds and close network groups uh, where we like to keep some information, I would say locked in, but uh, definitely shared among each other. And I would say you definitely need a mentor. Absolutely. It keeps you going. It gives you kind of an accountability partner as well to make sure that you're on track to hit your goals um, and learn new stuff at the same time. What is the most valuable thing your coaches, your mentors has told you? Don't be impulsive. (laughs) Don't be impulsive. It's very easy to uh, follow your initial instinct on what might be right, right there and then. I have actually on my computer monitor a post-it note that's in big letters that says, don't be impulsive. Because let's say you get an email from something and you really are, you you know the answer right there and then you think it's the appropriate answer. And it really might not be. And then a day later, uh, you realize, you look back on that time and you realize it might not have been the right reply or you could have done something a little bit differently. And by not being impulsive, it allows you to do some critical thinking, uh, make data driven uh, choices as opposed to emotional choices. That's the big thing is, is you need to be more data driven versus emotional with business. What is the one thing no one knows about you? Uh, (laughs) At this moment that I'm talking to you, no one really knows that I'm talking to you right now. Uh, uh, One thing that we just spoke about was a newfound hobby. Uh, This was right before the call, just... uh, doing some quick introductions was that I love skydiving and that's something that very few people know about. It's not something that I'm, uh, wasn't up until now, uh, advertising a little bit crazy. I was featured in a bunch of different publications over the last few months and they mentioned skydiving, but, uh, that's a kind of a newfound hobby is jumping out of planes and soaring through the air like a bird. What goes in your mind when you just, you are out on that ledge and you're about to just jump off? The, the first thing that goes through your mind is why, <laughs> why are you doing this? It's, it's just so much easier to be standing on the ground. It's more natural, it's easier, it logically makes more sense to be standing on the ground, maybe looking up at the plane. Uh, but when you're up there and you're about to make that jump, um, you have those nerves, of course, as any skydiver will tell you, you're always nervous when you make that initial jump, but the freedom and the control that you have when you're soaring through the air, I think is is one of those feelings that's unmatchable in life. It really is a very unique experience. You're literally dropping at a couple hundred uh, miles per hour, not a couple hundred, <laughs> 200 miles an hour, a little bit less, um, and just dropping and going. And then once that canopy opens, it's the most beautiful thing. You're just relaxing. You're taking a nice parachute ride down, enjoying the scenery, uh, doing some cool tricks if you're advanced. But yeah. What made you want to do this out of other adventurous things? You just picked the dangerous one. I feel like I'm the one up there now struggling down. Why did you, why did you pick this out of interest? Sorry. I've always been kind of a, I don't want to say extreme sports guy because I'm nowhere near as talented as many of these people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always been a scuba diver. Uh, I tried to surf sometimes, but I'm not very good at that. But I've always wanted to do adventurous things. And uh, when I was 18, I did a tandem skydive, which I was attached to somebody. And the rush and the feeling I got was kind of an addiction in a way where I ended up doing a tandem skydive with somebody attached uh, six other times over the, the, the following years after that. And mm-hmm. I realized, you know, if I enjoy jumping out of planes as much as I do, I got to get licensed. I have to get certified just to be able to do it on my own and have even more control and um, add some excitement. You know, (laughs) during the days I'm I'm sitting by a computer like a like a data nerd. And then at nights or in the later afternoons, I'm jumping out of planes like Superman. Okay, (laughs) keep doing what you're doing. Okay, what risks are involved with the digital marketing? Uh, I would say. Especially with Google, I don't want to say it's a risk because when you find the right marketing company, most things are pre-calculated and pre-strategized. But with Google, Google is always changing and they always have algorithms trying to beat out spam, provide good realistic results and essentially rank websites that are truly more authoritative, more trustworthy than the other. And uh, throughout the years, through the algorithm history, there's been various penalties that have come out uh, to uh, businesses of all different kinds, real natural enterprise sized businesses to small local mom and pop type businesses. And uh, the risk when doing an SEO campaign is that you might hire an SEO company that's not repeatable. 
that doesn't have the data to back up their philosophies or their techniques. So that's something that when you're doing, doing an SEO campaign, there's a risk and you have to do your due diligence, make sure that the company that you hire um, has a reputable track record, they have case studies, they have, they show off their clients, they have testimonials, you get good vibes when you when you speak to them and they, they're sharp like a tack and they understand uh, not only about SEO, but also your business and your goals, I think to prevent any big risks. How can small businesses utilize SEO? There's a lot of intro things that people can do. Um, I'm not going to deny that there's a lot of free information out there on the web in regards to SEO. Again, just be careful where you're reading from. But there's a lot of good foundational work that that most any business owner or marketing manager internally can do, kind of like making sure your website is a bit more SEO friendly. Just be careful not to make it look spammy and over optimized. That's kind of old school. But also build out, you know, your social media profiles, build out uh, local directories. If you're a local business, you know, Manta.com, Yelp.com, Facebook, get your name, address, phone number out there. That'll help with Google Maps. Um, And they'll also get a link back to your website, which uh, passes some trust that you're a real local business. Um, I would say those are easy foundational works for some quick wins that people can do and businesses can do for some SEO. And there's a lot of free information out there on the web. Uh, when it comes time to uh, really switch the playing field a little bit and, and get a an competitive advantage, then you can hire an SEO company. But um, if you're in a small local uh, town and there's not much competition, doing some of those things alone is enough to push the needle a little bit. Tell us more about your SEO program and the business. So I started doing SEO in 2009, where I was being a personal trainer. And my goal at the time was to rank a personal training website in New York City on Google, which we did successfully. And my passion kind of switched over and transferred to a passion for SEO from personal training. And over the years, I've just been building a over the years since 2009, a couple of years later, I started building a freelance business, being the uh, ace up the sleeve SEO consultant for businesses of all different sizes. And then in the later years, about three years ago, we decided to take a switch into an actual digital marketing agency where we now offer SEO. It's being able to be fulfilled by a much larger team, thankfully now. It's not all the work upon me directly, but I lead the team as the lead SEO. We also do a lot of paid traffic generation campaigns, you know, paid ads, social media, retargeting, real-time bidding, all the mumbo-jumbo stuff. Uh, so SEO really is, um, in our initial, I would say, core offerings, and it's where we started. So I personally am um, still fascinated by SEO since first time I ever read about it. And that's really what we're good at. You know, we have a bunch of feeder websites for our own business, our agency. We're ranking very highly in Google for all the different SEO New York type search terms. We have a website, seoservicesnewyork.org, which is ranking there. And we also have our umbrella company, breaktheweb.org, uh, which is, all again, it's, it's slowly climbing. When we get around to getting some work done to it, um, it slowly climbs. So what is this uh, your farm who is this for is it someone who's already in the middle or someone who's uh, uh just have it starting up um it could be both if the startup has uh, a series of funding that always helps if the company is just an idea and they haven't yet implemented anything it's not really a budget uh then we might not be the right agency for them uh we like to work with businesses it could be the business owner or the marketing manager uh, but primarily businesses that have a healthy marketing investment. And that's the key point is not looking at it more as an expense or a budget, but more so an investment into what can happen online. Uh, so businesses that have a healthy investment, businesses that have a healthy business, a healthy um, internal business, they're not uh, desperate to get those SEO rankings to make sure that they are able to keep the lights on the next month. That's not the type of clients we work with. Uh, most of our clients understand that SEO is an investment and it does take time. And it does provide amazing, amazing results when the, the campaign is, is successful. So uh, that's that's really it's who it's for is, is businesses that are ready to take things to the next level. You know, they've been doing something. It's been working out well for them. And they know that they have to switch it up a little bit. What is the future of marketing and the CEO? Uh, that's always going to be changing. Uh, right now, the big one is voice search. Um, it's not fully implemented in regards to voice search optimization, but I think that's definitely going to play big in the future. Um, obviously, the best thing you can do now to prepare for voice search is to be positioned highly in Google. They're going to be looking at the Google organic results uh, for the recommendations with voice search. And the higher you are, the better chances you have to be that, that lucky one selected. Uh, so that's definitely going to be something wow. to look, keep an eye out for. Where 
where do we find the, your agency and how can we get in contact with you? All right. Well, I can be reached directly at 646-450-0046, extension 101, Eastern Standard Time. I can be emailed at jason at breaktheweb.org or our various websites, jasonperkowitz.com, seoservicesnewyork.org, and breaktheweb.org. So, Clan, there will be more from Jason in a moment. If you are listening on one of the many podcast platforms rather than my website and you are encouraged by Jason's journey, go to onlinesuccessjourney.com for a bonus portion of the interview. The Online Success Journey is a wonderful membership community built for people searching for the path to success. We are one big clan and you can be part of this community for free. Once you have joined the clan, click on part two of Jason's journey or over a hundred other journeys that are available and learn how you can find the right path for your own online success. That's a wrap clan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and Jason.